Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamental concepts of software testing and helping you understand and learn a lot about testing details. Now today we are still continuing with the chapter 8 where you're talking about the quality characteristics of testing and uh, we are further building up the next segment here which is to talk about the 8.3 performance testing. Now performance as the team suggests we are trying to make sure the performance is outstanding but of course not just the way we feel like right. So let's get started and understand more about what exactly performance testing is all about. In order to get started, the very first thing is how do we define performance testing? Performance is to measure the stability of the system, to talk about the various response times which you get when we interact and perform any action on the product, and also the transactions throughput, which is defined as the number of transactions per unit time. And here the transactions are just not limited to banking terminology. We are also referring to any kind of action which is performed by a user or set of actions to complete a task is called as transaction. And why? Varying the number of concurrent users. The concurrent users at any point means the number of simultaneous users working on that application. Now the point here is, it generally talks about the number of people using the system at the same time has a different and weird side effects of performance of the application. And generally the most important thing which gets impacted is the response time. It is not that when 10 people are working on your system and it's not the same when 100 people are working on your system. And what if you have 100,000 people working on your system? We just want to assure that the system works in the given scenarios by the business. The business will always give you all that information what you need to test and as a part of it if there are any quality characteristics like performance testing in scope they will also provide you the necessary environment, the uh, number of users and what are they expecting in that scenario. Now what does performance of a system depends on? right it is is it about the architecture is it about the resources if i increase the ram is it going to increase my performance or is it more about how these in users are interacting with the system is that like if they are trying to perform the same set of operations every time or is that like just because they are using the system it can increase the load so there are three major standards which are recognized by ISO 25110 classification for the sub-characteristics of performance efficiency, which includes the time behavior in terms of response time, resource utilizations, which are all my hardwares, which I'm using to host the system as a part of my environment, and the capacity, which is certainly the limit which my system can handle. So time behavior, of course, the ability of a component or system to respond to a user or system inputs within a specified time under specified conditions. If you say here, uh, the specified time and specified conditions, we just can't go very wide open saying that in any given scenario, it should be less than or equal to three seconds. Come on, that's something which is unbelievable and unachievable. I just can't justify that. I just can't validate such things that in any scenario, it should be less than or equal to three seconds. I should know what are these any scenario stands for. And I may not be able to satisfy the customer needs in that sense. So it has to be more meaningful. It has to be sometimes specific where the customer gives me all the details about the environment and talks about various different actions which can be done simultaneously by a different set of users. Sometimes it's not that all the 100 users are doing the same operation. Maybe they're on the same application but working on different threads and that's where we want to make sure that if it is distributed, though the users are simultaneous but uh, they might be working on different transactions, the performance is different. So that's one thing where you're talking about the time behavior to be measured as a part of performance testing. Whereas resource utilization is the capability of the software product to use the appropriate amount and types of resources. Of course, the resource which we are referring to is all my hardware equipment which are used to host an application. We're talking right from the memories like the hardware, hard disk, or we have the RAM, we have CPU utilizations, the number of cores on the processor and SSD and all that cache memories which are taking care of the various operations which are done behind the screen. So we consider every single parameter which is 
in terms of hardware is contributing to the performance because all these contribute heavily in terms of making sure that how the resource is being utilized while performing all these set of actions. Sometimes your performance degrades or most of the time the performance degrades when you are up with 80% of your resource utilization and that's where you will start observing a degrade or down ramp of the performance of the system. So that is how you can see that uh, maybe at this point it's time for us to increase the resources what we are using to perform the necessary performance test. So we will have to upgrade the hardware and then try with more number of users if it is in the scope. Finally, the capacity, which is the maximum limit to which a particular parameter can be handled, which is in terms of um, finding out the breakpoints, finding out the limits on different attributes, be it about the number of users on the system, be it about the resource utilization, which will be mentioned as a threshold on that and uh, the users uh, when working simultaneously, what is the optimum utilization which we can have and that would be safe for all other users to work upon. So the point here is pretty much to talk about how do we validate performance testing. Now that's all the parameters which we basically review or validate during performance testing. But the question now is how do we do that? Is there some specific approach if there's different types or ways by which we can do that, let's have a look on that. Talking about the various types in which performance testing can be performed or quite widely known as the types of performance testing, and they are load testing, stress testing, volume testing, endurance testing, and spike testing. In a very nutshell way, we talk about the load testing, it is to measure the performance of a system when we apply the defined load on the system and test the various possible parameters including stability, response time, resource utilizations and number of transactions being placed. Now load given that we are talking about the number of users are defined by the customer. So what we are referring here is to the number of users which customer defines with the requirement that hey we are looking forward to 100 users right now and we just want to make sure that when 100 users are working on this there are no problems right either they work one after the other like in intervals or they might be working in terms of uh, simultaneously right so up to the limit given by the customer when you're testing the environment or the system up to that limit is what you call it as load testing talking about the next one which is stress testing and stress testing is of course as the name suggests we are applying more stress on it and that is of course to go beyond the limit given by the customer so of course the limit here say for example was 100 when i try anything beyond 100 users working on the system and reviewing the performance of it validating the performance attributes is what i call it as stress testing the question here is why should i do stress testing if 100 users are working fine as a part of uh, load testing right the reason is to just make sure that the system does not crash right at 101 because we, we generally look forward to understand the bottlenecks of the system and the resource utilization that what if the system is crashing at 101 I cannot make the customer stand at the edge while using the system so I push the safe limit a little away generally 25% from the given limit. So I will make it safe for 125 user and then release the software by telling the customer that it's going to work only for 100 users. Why? Figure out that and let me know what you think about it. Volume testing is an approach to perform this load and stress but when all the users are working at a time that is simultaneously on the system. For example, 100 users trying to hit the login button at the same time. What's the reaction of the application? Does it really stand through or does it crash? What about the response time? Does it increase all of a sudden? Does it take longer for people to log in? We evaluate all that. On the other hand, endurance is more about when the users are continuously working on the system, but in interval for a prolonged period of time. Okay, for example, I ask you to hold a glass of water, you know, and raise it high in your hand and I want you to hold there for 
for a long time, maybe like four to five hours. I think by the time it's 10 minutes or 15 minutes, your hand will start aching and you will put down the glass. Now, this is what we meant is, per, you know, users are using the system step by step, like one after the other. For example, not 100 users are working at a time. 10 people every 15 minutes are coming in. 10 people every 15 minutes are coming in, but the one who came earlier did not leave. So consistently you have been applying load there, but you're not removing the load and for a prolonged period of time, for a continuous period of time. So system sometime can say, boss, I'm done, right? I'm done. If I ask you to do 10 setups, you may quickly do it and say, yeah, I'm fresh. But if I ask you to do 100 setups, you may cry. Right? That's what you call it as endurance, which is also called as soaking, like soak testing, right? That's another name for endurance. Finally, talking about the spike testing, and a spike testing is more about when you experience sudden increment and drop in the number of users. Sudden increment and drop. You can experience or visualize a spike right in front of you. A conical kind of object is what you call it as a spike. Even a mountain can be called as a spike or even a shoe which you use with cones below that is also called as a spike. Now spikes just has one thing to understand that it is a sudden increment and drop in the number of users. It is to measure if your application is gonna experience a sudden increment in number of users utilizing your system and after a few minutes the users just drop down. And again, you have average number of people working on your application. So generally, when you have offers, you're talking about Black Friday, you're talking about some annual fests where you are selling some free passes and you want the crowd to basically visit your website for some reason. That's where a spike testing is performed to see that if our system experience a sudden increment in a lot of users, then what happens to the system? Does it crash? Because say, for example, you have been doing 20 sit-ups every day. All of a sudden, if I ask you to do 200 sit-ups today, you may collapse and I have to take you to the hospital, right? Now, I hope that makes a lot of sense to all of you. That's where we wanted to give you a quick introduction to performance testing. And of course, there are several tools to support the performance test process. For common examples are uh, LoadRunner, JMeter, NeoLoad, and you can try any of these softwares to get started and learning them. I do have my other channel where I talk about the tools. You can look forward to that. That is testing in nutshell, and you can look forward to great tutorials on LoadRunner for sure. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, Keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.